Folks, since 2007, my next guest has served the great state of New York in both the House and the Senate. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. <laughs> Well, there's been a lot of speculation as to why you're here tonight, and I just wanted to point out to everybody, what could she possibly have to talk about? She was here in November. I mean, November, take out the holidays, you were basically here last week. So, I'm just curious, uh, do you have anything you would like to announce? Yes. <laughs> and what would that be, madam? I'm filing an exploratory committee for Woo! President of the United States tonight! Tonight. There you go. Okay, well, thank you for telling everybody here. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm honored that you're here. Um, uh, why do you want to be president of the United States? Well, I'm going to run for president of the United States because as a young mom, I'm going to fight for other people's kids as hard as I would fight for my own, which is why I believe that health care should be a right and not a privilege. It's why I believe yeah, we should have better public schools for our kids because it shouldn't matter what block you grow up on. And I believe that anybody who wants to work hard enough should be able to get whatever job training they need to earn their way into the middle class. But you are never going to accomplish any of these things if you don't take on the systems of power that make all of that impossible, which is taking on institutional racism. It's taking on the corruption and greed in Washington, taking on the special interests that write legislation in the dead of night. And I know that I have the compassion, the courage, and the fearless determination to get that done. Well, you're running. Officially, it's exploratory committee, right? Correct. How often does the exploratory committee go out and explore and come back and go, yeah, I don't run? <laughs> Is it a formality, the exploratory committee, or you, you are running, right? Well, it's an important first step, okay. and it's one I am taking because I'm going to run. Is it... Is it... <laughs> sure. Right now is a very interesting time to be announcing your candidacy for president because, um... The crisis uh, going on in the White House right now and the shutdown of the government makes... Um, things couldn't get worse. How about that? Yeah. You know, a change is as good of a vacation. Um, the, we talk about on the show a lot here that, whoa, wow, the world's on fire. Can we all agree that the world's on fire now? Yeah. Can we debate about whether that part of it or this part of it should be on fire? Right. And America right now is uh, interviewing for new fire chiefs. <laughs> Because the present fire chief likes to play with matches. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing you would do on, on day one in office? Well, the first thing I would do is restore what's been lost, uh, the integrity and the compassion of this country. Uh, I would bring people together to start getting things done. If you want to get health care done, you have to bring Democrats and Republicans to the table on the shared values of this country. We all love our children. And so if you want to get things done, you have to bring people together, find that common ground, and get it done. But you have to start by restoring what's been lost, restoring our leadership in the world, addressing things like global climate change, and being that beacon... <laughs> and, and being that, that beacon of light and hope in the world. Today is... Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And he said, he said only, only light can drive out darkness, and all of us are called to be that light right now. Well, uh, all of those things that you named, all of those things are worthy goals, uh, big challenges. Let's talk about the present challenge right now. Does the government shut down uh, day 25, the government shut down... Uh, if you were the president... And, and you were at these loggerheads with Congress and the government was shut down. How would you end this moment? Yeah. 
Well, first of all, we have 800,000 people who did not get a paycheck. There are families all across America right now that are worried about not making their rent, not paying their mortgage, not having the money to heat their home or buy food for their kids or buy their prescription medicine. So what he has done is absolutely outrageous. And so what I would do differently is I would bring people together and talk about why I care and why the issue that I'm fighting for is so important. Bring people behind you based on what it is you want to change and why. That's what we did to pass the 9-11 health bill. When we had our first responders, they came to Washington over and over again to be heard. I amplified their voices. We made sure everyone knew what was happening in their lives. And that's why we passed the bill unanimously. Would, Twice. Would you back down? If you were Trump at this point, would you back down? Because his poll numbers are dropping, uh, the Democrats are getting more support, he's being blamed uh, for the shutdown. Is the strongest thing he could do would be to lose right now for the country? He's created the problem himself. He's created this crisis himself. And he shouldn't be having a temper tantrum because he can't get what he wants. What he should be doing is speaking to the Democrats and Republicans in Congress and saying what his vision is for immigration reform and what he wants to accomplish. But shutting down the government is hurting people. Right now, he's doing it because he wants his way. If you're going to do something like that, you better be fighting for other people, not for yourself. I and everybody likes the idea of bringing people together um, uh, for shared values. What are those shared values that the, you'd think that, say, uh, let's just take the Senate. Let's take uh, the Democratic members of the Senate and the Republican members of the Senate. What are the things that would force them to come together? Because certainly we are in a moment of crisis and they're not coming together. How do you get people to come to uh, the table when all their, both their constituencies will vote them out of office if they budge an inch. How, how do you move the needle that's been nailed in place? So I don't think that's true. I think if you start by listening, this is what I do. Are you calling me a liar? It, Are you calling me no, a liar? No, no, okay. no, no. Um, I'm listening. Mm. Wow. So, so what you do is you yes. start by listening. You hear what that person wants to accomplish. You can find common ground, which is what I've done in the last 12 years I've been in public service. You find common ground you and you build. The aisle with yes, that's how you pass the 9 11 health bill. It's how we pass don't ask, don't tell repeal. Because what you have to do is what do we have in common? We want strong national security. Well, then why would you get rid of your sharpshooters and your language experts and people in mission critical areas just based on who they love? And so the common ground was we all want strong military readiness. And from there, you can say, well, let's not discriminate against people based on who they love. And that's how you bring the seven Republicans that we needed to the table. And so you can always find common ground on everything. And I have a bipartisan bill with nearly every member of the Senate. I mean, Ted Cruz and I agreed on how to end sexual harassment in the Congress and wrote a bill together, which ultimately was passed unanimously. Me and Ted Cruz. You and Ted Cruz. So you just have to... Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for believing in something so much you were willing to talk to Ted Cruz. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, real quick, um, you like to swear. Everybody knows you like to swear. We've talked about this before. Are you going to not swear on the campaign trail? I'm, because it's very stressful. I'm going to definitely try. Okay. <laughs> What's the word you'll miss the most? Um, rhymes with duck. <laughs> Schmuck. Schmuck. Okay, well, listen, as I said, I I've, run I've run for president twice, actually. I know how difficult it can be. <laughs> I hope it goes better for you than it did for me. So we have some uh, campaign gifts for you here, things you'll need. In Iowa, just wave this around everywhere you go. We got a, we got a whole one here. We have right in the Aww. basket here, we have, uh, have a baby uh, for you to hold and kiss because I understand your children are too big to hold now. Yes, they are. Okay, the, I'll put it here. No, no, no odd I, for you. it needs you to be hold? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I birthed the baby. We have a piece of granite for New Hampshire. <laughs> we have mustard-based barbecue for South Carolina. Um, uh, we have, and this is the most important thing, we have an actual plane ticket to take you to Michigan yes! so you will campaign We're there. going to Michigan! 
But you're, most importantly, your, your viewers mo might know this, but yes. Gretchen Whitmer just got elected to be governor of Michigan, and she crushed it in the last election. So I helped her campaign, and I helped her in the primary. I'll keep this in your basket. Yep. And most importantly at all, we got you this coveted pin. It's a one of a kind so far, and it's. Uh, I announced on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. It's a collector's item. Madam, Senator and official presidential hopeful Kirsten Gillibrand, everybody. We'll be right back with M. Night Shyamalan.